The person I am today is not the person I was a few years ago. In fact, a lot has changed. And if I had to describe my old me, it would look something like someone who wanted to be healthy, wanted to exercise, and wanted to eat well, but couldn't for the life of me do it. I would start and stop and start and stop. And that cycle would continue for years and years. I felt like there was no way I could get out of the cycle because with time, I just felt really demotivated. Now, what I'm about to share with you isn't a quick fix. It's not an overnight fix, but these are the four most important parts of a theory called reparenting that have helped me literally transform myself to going from being really lazy to being someone who I consider as really self-disciplined in a kind and loving manner. It's not harsh or toxic discipline that we're talking about. We're talking about the kind of discipline that makes you reach your goals but do it without getting burnt out, without being exhausted, without hating yourself, out of all that jazz. We're talking about kind self-discipline. So let's get into it. And hi, my name is Jen, if you're new here. And if you're not, welcome back. So let me quickly explain what reparenting is or what Google defines it as. <laughs> Parenting is a form of self-therapy that develops our ability to parent ourselves and meet our needs both past and present. It simply means giving yourself what you didn't receive from your parents when you were a child. For example, as a child, I wasn't taught how to practice healthy habits or let alone stick to them. My family structure or the environment I grew, in, grew up in was all about short-term pleasure and not about long-term benefits or happiness from healthier habits. So what reparenting is, is basically learning to be your own parent in a way that helps you heal this autopilot approach that you were taught or that you saw in childhood. Because believe it or not, most of us are literally just playing or being a version that only knows the past only knows what our parents showed us only knows what our environment showed us and if you didn't grow up in an environment that made you really love and stick to healthy habits these are some really important tips many of us have a critical inner parent we feel like we're anxious or we feel inadequate and that sort of stops us or makes this resistance towards sticking to healthy habits really hard so essentially reparenting is becoming a nurturing self-loving parent to ourselves and to our inner child now there's different approaches to this and there's different research on this as well. So I'm just gonna be sharing the four points that have helped me the most that I felt were the most applicable and reasonable to understand and that I actually knew how to freaking apply. The first one is self-care. You know I love self-care. I mean, I've got a, f a whole series about it and it's not about to end anytime soon. To me, there's so many different signs to self-care, but in this context, we're talking about taking responsibilities for our own self and for our own life. If we had unreliable parents, unpredictable parents emotionally or physically, it's likely we struggle with reliability and predictability within ourselves. We might bore easily in routine or structure. We might only start when we feel really motivated or we might give in to short-term pleasure really quickly without much thought. What helped me get out of the cycle to only starting something when I was super motivated and stopping when I felt bored or tired by it was really simple. It was bringing in self-awareness. I used this knowledge that I had now like accumulated from books, YouTube videos, talking to my therapist and really thought the only thing I need in this moment to start with is self-awareness. What is it like and how am I? What am I like when this shows up? And that is a really, it sounds really simple and it is simple, but it just takes you, it, all it takes is for you to remember to do it. So what I do is when there's a moment when I feel resistance towards doing something, like I don't wanna go to the gym, I'm really exhausted. It is not the kind of exhausted, like my body needs the rest. It's coming from a point of, I can't be arsed. I'm, I wanna be lazy in this moment. Bringing some awareness into it. I literally just look in with myself and ask, okay, what is happening? What do I feel? What does it feel like? Where does it show up in my body? And just being aware about it allows me to understand patterns. Because by being self-aware in multiple situations, I can piece together, okay, this happens when this is triggering me. And this happens after this has happened. And this is what I can do to not even get to the trigger. So self-awareness is basically the foundation that you need to understand your own patterns and then bring some action into changing that. So being self-aware when all of these parts come up, when they're being active is one of the most important parts. 
The second thing which adds on to self-aware in a self-care manner is discipline. Now that we have self-awareness and we've practiced it, we understand our patterns, we understand what makes us get to certain places, the next step is being disciplined. Our inner child, if we didn't have the proper upbringing to support discipline, feels overwhelmed in this idea that we have to do something consistently. The way I look at discipline is as a life a rule book. I basically I basically just envision what kind of life I want to have and then whip out and plan out what kind of rule book is necessary to get me there. So it's basically I set up a guide, a rule book for what I want to be doing, how I want to be acting that gets me to my goals. And this is a really healing way to do it. Discipline is a way of keeping promises to ourselves. Keeping a promise to a child is one of the most important things we can do and you probably know that yourself. The way you felt as a child when someone made a promise but didn't keep it was really detrimental, I think. The best way to heal that part and heal discipline and be disciplined is by keeping these promises to ourselves. The best way to ensure that we keep them is to make them realistic. Like I wouldn't promise a child a $1 million check when they turn 18 unless I knew I could have a $1 million for them when they're 18. So being realistic about the promises I keep to myself is really important for me to sticking to them. In the beginning, when I'm just building habits, these look like really small promises, like drinking water every day or not having a Coke Zero at dinner time. It'll be a really small thing that doesn't take too much energy and too much effort. Keeping these promises over time helps me trust myself, helps me believe in myself, and that builds my self-confidence, and my self-confidence in turn helps me build bigger habits and become more self-disciplined. Another practical approach that I have to this is like trusting in the 80-20 rule. If I do what I said I would do 80% of the time, then 20% of the time that I don't wanna be doing it, is still self-disciplined, but it's a recovery slash healing phase, whereas the other 80% is a doing and acting phase. And if I want to make a new promise to myself, all I, I'll end up doing is asking myself, can I stick to this 80% of, of the time in my week that looks like five days? Can I stick to this five days in a week? If the answer is yes, it's a realistic thing I can introduce into my new rule book and then just act on it. It just takes practice and time. These things haven't happened overnight, but they have correctly built up and laid out this fantastic foundation for me to be able to do really complex habits and also do the really simple and effortless habits. The next one is really straightforward, but it is also really important and that is joy. Joy as a child is really important. We wanna have fun with the things that we're doing. And if we don't allow ourselves to have joy in having these habits, there's no way we're sticking with it or it'll take so much effort to do it every single day or whenever we commit to it. The way I look at joy is if I'm trying to do these habits, what part of it do I enjoy? How much of it can I incorporate and how much of it can't I? If something is not too joyful, but I know I want to do it because it's good for me, I'll introduce it in smaller bits. If there's something that I really enjoy, but I don't know if I'll enjoy it long term, I'll introduce it into bigger bits and evaluate based on that. Either way, my idea is I want to do things that bring me joy, long term joy. If it feels hard in the moment, that's okay. I value it based on how I feel afterwards, how I feel in the evening, how I feel the next day, and especially how I feel in a few months from now. Sometimes when we're working out, we don't see results or we don't feel the results until weeks weeks later. And that's when I start evaluating. Is it something that really brings me joy long-term or is it short-term joy? And the last bit that is really important, I, I mean, all of these are important, but the fourth part to this puzzle is emotional regulation. That part of self-parenting is imperative. It's the, our ability to self-soothe. Life is challenging. Things are challenging, things will feel hard, things will feel overwhelming, and they will definitely feel difficult at the beginning. Our ability to objectively take a step back and understand I need rest, I need to self-soothe, I need to figure out what I need to feel safe and happy, or at least feel self-soothe in this moment, is what separates from soothing and stopping. If I have the ability to okay, know, okay, this is hard, this was a hard day, now I need a bit of rest, tomorrow I go again, or in a few days I'll go again. That is 
what I think caring is self-parenting and being a good parent to ourselves. If I say, oh my God, this is difficult, I just wanna stop straight away because the emotions take over and I don't have the ability to self-soothe, that's when we most likely start and stop with things. So emotional regulation is a topic and a video all in itself. If you, if you would like to know more about this, I will definitely make a video because it also plays into our ability to have tough conversations, to be in romantic relationships. Emotional regulation is the key to a lot of things. But in this context, it's, a, it's our ability to regulate how we feel in certain situations. And with practicing habits, it's just, it's not gonna be fun and games every time. We're gonna be really tired. Things will feel hard. And this the difference from just stopping is being able to check in with myself and saying, okay, this is where I'm at at my emotional scale right now. This is where, where I'm at. This is what I need. Helping myself self-soothe, self-regulate and then coming back into a state of safety, regulated, a regulated self, and then going on with my habits. So I hope this made sense. I hope you understood what I meant. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I'd be really happy to get your feedback on just the input that I was sharing with you. Also, thank you so much for watching this video. It means so much, especially if you've gotten to this last point, that means you watched most of it, which I really appreciate. And if you're already here, why not just subscribe and yeah, just be updated with the videos that are to come. So I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye.